Hey everybody, beautiful day today, isn't it? I'm making this video outside on a beautiful day, so this one should be a good one. So we're gonna solve by square roots in this video. So before we start solving some complicated equations, the first thing I wanna do is remind you of a few things about taking square roots. So when you are taking the square root of x squared, what you're gonna do is take half of the exponent, so we're gonna square root both sides here to get the x to become, or the x squared to become just x. And that's gonna equal the square root of nine, which we know is three. But it's actually plus or minus three, because let's talk about that real quick. Three squared is equal to nine. A negative three squared is also equal to nine. So therefore, when you are solving, you have to remember that when you take a square root to have a plus or minus, because just like we said, if we substitute a positive three or a negative three here, we would end up with nine. So in this next one, we have x squared is equal to three, so we're gonna square root both sides, and we're gonna have x is equal to plus or minus and we're gonna leave something that can't be simplified as the square root of three. So that would be your final answer because we know that the square root of three squared is just gonna give you three. Same with negative square root of three. Um, negative square root of three squared would give you three. Next example, the square root of a negative 25. In the last video you learned how to take the square root of a negative. So this would just give us x is equal to plus or minus 5i. Okay, it's plus or minus 5i because now we can work with imaginary numbers. And the last example is how you simplify a radical. So remember, way back in the day, you learned that the square root of 8, although it has a decimal, you would have to break it down using the factor tree or divide out the perfect square root However you learned to do it back in the day is the same way that you should do it now. It will work. Um, I will tell you I lean towards the simplifying with a factor tree method. The reason why is this method also works for doing cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, and it's uh, very easy to work with. So the square root of 8 is 2 root 2. So your answer would be x is equal to plus or minus 2 root 2. Okay, so if you have any um, hesitations on taking square roots, you might want to go watch a video on how to work with taking square roots. Okay, um, so here we go. When you're solving, what you want to do is first get the squared part of the equation by itself. So the first step is just going to be to subtract 3 from both sides as if we were solving any old equation. So we have x squared is equal to 4. But once you get the squared part by itself, what you're going to do is square root both sides. So we're going to square root both sides, and we get x is equal to plus or minus 2. And of course, you can check these with your graphing calculator. You can type x squared plus 3 into y1 and 7 into y2, and you can still solve. However, that only checks your answers in decimal form in case it's a radical. Remember, unless otherwise stated, you're going to want to leave your answers exact. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Second example, the first thing you would do is subtract 3 from both sides, and you have 2x squared is equal to 50. Divide both sides by 2 because we're still getting x by itself, and we have x squared is equal to 25. So once you square root both sides, again, we're going to have x is equal to plus or minus 5. Okay, so that's how you take the square root, or solve by square roots when we have an x squared that's isolated. Now what we're going to do is square a quantity. So we're going to go work with those next. This example right here, we have a quantity squared. So you cannot subtract 3 from both sides. And you could multiply x plus 3 times itself to square it, and you would get x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 16, and then solve using another method. However, when we know that this is a perfect square, 
we can just square root right now. Once your parentheses squared are by themselves, you can square root now. And you're going to be left with x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus 4. Again, it's very important to remember that when you're solving by square roots, to include the plus or minus. And now we just need to subtract 3 from both sides now to get x by itself. But this is going to look a little bit funny the first time you see it. Um, x is equal to a negative 3 plus or minus 4. Because what we did is we have this plus or minus 4 still. So we have an x is equal to a negative 3 plus 4, which is 1. And we also have a negative 3 minus 4, which is negative 7. So if that was a little confusing for you, once you get here, what you could have done is split it. You could have said x plus 3 is equal to the positive 4, and the x plus 3 is equal to the negative 4. And then once you subtract, you would have seen it a little bit easier. But when we get to some of the more complicated ones, you're going to want to keep it with the plus or minus. So it's just a good habit to do it that way. But like I said, if you want to split it, you can go right ahead and do it. You'll just sometimes have to write the answer twice. Okay? Same thing that's going to happen here. We already have the parentheses squared by themselves, so let's get rid of the squared. That's going to leave us with x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus 5. And this is the part I'm talking about. If you want to split it right now, you can. You can say x plus 2 is equal to a, five, or a square root of 5, or you can say an x plus 2 is equal to a negative square root of 5. Remember, the square root of 5 is square root of 5. It cannot simplify. So what you're going to do now is just say x, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides, is equal to a negative 2 plus or minus square root of 5. Okay, and that's the simpler way to write your answer. If you want, you could write negative 2 plus the square root of 5 and negative 2 minus the square root of 5. I'm just offering this as an easier way to write your final answer. Okay, um, now there's two left. We're going to step through um, them step by step again. If you feel confident, you can pause the video and try this next one on your own. However, if you're a little unsure, go right ahead and follow along. The first thing you're going to need to do is get the parentheses by themselves. So just like solving any equation, the first thing you would do is add or subtract. So you're going to subtract 8 here, and that's going to give you 2 times x minus 3 squared, and that's equal to a negative 10. Then what you would do is divide both sides by 2. That would leave you with x minus 3 squared is equal to a negative 5. Now what you would do is get rid of the squared by square rooting both sides, and that's going to leave you with x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus i root 5. So like I said, we are going to get into solving with imaginary numbers now that you know how to work with the square roots of negatives. So the square root of 5 cannot be simplified, but the square root of negative is i. So the square root of a negative 5 is i root 5. Last step, add 3 to both sides. So you're going to have x is equal to 3 plus or minus i root 5. Again, you could say 3 plus i root 5 and 3 minus i root 5. The choice is yours. Okay, and the last example you probably found pretty simple if you tried it on your own. The first thing you did is just wrote x plus 3 squared is equal to 0. And we know that the square root of 0 is still 0. So we have x plus 3 is equal to 0, so x is equal to a negative 3. We do not have two answers there because the square root of 0 is just 0, so there's only one solution this time. Okay? That's it for this video on solving using square roots. We will need that skill for when we get to solving by completing the square. So this is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.